My lesson plan is on combining reading and science, and it is a third grade plan about a butterfly's life cycle. And in this, they were the there was some key content vocabulary that I wanted them to learn. As you can see, my lesson plan here, it's uh, talking about how it, the final thing will be that they would illustrate and identify the stages of a butterfly's life cycle. And they were gonna do that by doing a few different activities. And the book I was using is Monarch Butterfly by Gail Gibbons. And they had several reading standards to where they could analyze informational text. And also the overall standard for science was the plants and animals have life cycles that are part of adapt adaptations for survival in their natural environments. So the overall measurable outcomes would be that students recall, could recall the information regarding butterflies life cycle from the illustrations the vocabulary and features of the read aloud text and that they could rephrase the main ideas of this to complete all the sections on the BKWLQ chart together with at least three items under each heading on the chart. And then under the science content the outcome was when given a paper leaf and various uncooked noodles, students will identify and match the appearance of the stages in the butterfly's life cycle in the correct order with 100% accuracy. And then we had a couple of vocabulary things that we were going to do with um, centers. So there would be three different groups working on those. As we go down through, you can see the different vocabulary terms that I felt they needed to know to understand it better. Some of them were life cycle, metamorphosis, molting, pupa, pro, uh, antenna, migration, egg. Um, and then also, as I said, they needed to be able to identify the correct stages and then also understand what those uh, content vocabulary terms were. For my three centers that we were going to do for the third graders, one was a crossword puzzle that I made online. Another was the headbands vac vocabulary game. And then also, as I mentioned, that noodle um, kind of pasta and life cycle activity. So the BKWLQ chart is basically the same thing as the BKL chart, or sorry, as the KWL chart. But the B stands for um, getting more background knowledge for the kids. So it's, it's about introducing some background knowledge for them so that they could even tell me anything that they would know. And on that, I had done the chart, which I will scroll down here, the chart that I did for my reading strategy um, for building background. And on this lesson plan, it was to watch a sci -shy, or sci show kids video on the life cycle of a butterfly. It's like a three or four minute video so that they would have an idea of what we're even talking about. And then so we would kind of uh, get the information under B as to what they learned from the video to start the lesson. Then we would talk about what they know and what they want to know before we read the Monarch Butterfly book. And again, the book is Monarch Butterfly by Gail Gibbons. And once we read the book, we talk about what they learned and see if what they wanted to learn actually got talked about in the book. And if any of the things under what they thought they knew ended up being false and we needed to um, go over some correct information for that. And then under the queue is what new questions do they have after the reading? I know sometimes we read books to kids or work on lessons and then what we do actually makes them have more questions. So that's what the queue column is for in this reading strategy. Back up in the lesson plan. So we were going to watch the SciShow Kids video on how a caterpillar becomes a butterfly and then work on the chart. And then after that, we would read The Monarch Butterfly by Gail Gibbons and have a think pair share at different points in that to keep the kids involved. And after that, they would be assigned to a group one, two, or three. And these groups would be various um, levels of learning and um, academic abilities, but they would be somewhat close in ability so that they could all help each other um, efficiently. 
So one center would be the crossword puzzle, and that is what I used when we had to submit our game. This was one of my games last week. It was really more like an activity, but it's on the teacherscorner.net, and you just type in um, crossword creation, and it'll come up. So, and I, I gave them this word bank here, so that would help all the kids with spelling and help them match things up, and those that have um, trouble learning or maybe the ELL group, I would put even like the beginning letter in some of the in some of the boxes to help them or even the beginning and ending letter so that they can match it up. And that would be one activity that the group would be working on. And then the other activity would be the headbands game that I brought in for the game last last week in class. And to modify this for ELL or struggling learners, I actually printed out pictures of what um, molting looks like or what larva is and then I also listed the Spanish words for those in case we had those learners in the class that needed that and for learners that need a little more challenge it would just be the word and no pictures or other things to help them and then when we're talking about gifted learners um, their extended activity would be doing a Venn diagram after they researched how life cycle of a moth was different than a butterfly and they could compare and contrast the butterflies and the moths and also, if there were ELL students, like Spanish-speaking students, I found a different book on a butterfly's life cycle. So in addition to hearing me read the book, they could then read this book on their own. And maybe that would make some more connections for them because that would have more Spanish words. Their final project that I was doing the measuring to see if they accomplished the standard was doing the butterfly life cycle using rice for the eggs and then spiral macaroni for the caterpillar stage, and then shell macaroni for the chrysalis and bowtie pasta for the butterfly. And on these, we would use uh, food coloring too, so that you know the butterflies could be dyed a different color. And again, the chrysalis and the spirals could be dyed a different color. So after doing all of those things, kind of going back up here to see what else I need to tell you guys. Um, again, throughout, we would discuss the terms, and I think that the things that I've chosen would get the kids doing some more hands-on activity, doing group work together so that they wouldn't be quite so bored, just kind of different ways to learn the vocabulary and different ways to show me what they know. And basically, that is the entirety of my lesson plan. And like I said, it has all of the things in here. Here's all of the sources that I used. Again, the, the uh, channel or the website that I used for the video to get them engaged in the lesson and the different books that I used. And there's the teacher's corner that I told you about for creating crossword puzzles. That's great. I use that all the time. And that would be the end of my third grade lesson for how a caterpillar becomes a butterfly and the life cycle of the butterfly that fits the science standard and brings in the Monarch Butterfly Trade Book by Gail Gibbons.